Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Alaikum salam. Sayyidi, regarding the reality of sound, how can we increase our inner voice or inner guidance? Does the voice correspond to, to the level and the frequency of the person? Who, whose voice? On the levels of the sound, does the inner voice… say it again? Regarding the reality of sound, how can we increase our inner voice or inner guidance? Does the voice correspond to the level and the frequency of the person? Inshallah, if I understand it correctly, yes. That at, at every level the connection has to become stronger, right? So at the introductory level when you connect, it's not the f same frequency coming. Because every, every frequency is shattering a falsehood. So we have many layers of frequency. So when we're first establishing the connection, there's a, a lot of myself and that connection is coming now to begin to crush. A lot of sickness, a lot of headaches, a lot of nausea, a lot of fevers, a lot of all, all, all these different cleansings. That's why we say the, the path and imtihan and tests is because we're not at the frequency Allah wants us to be. So you don't assume that somebody just comes, you connect and they turn the dial and you're glowing because everything would be shattered, the person would fall to be dead. Sayyidina Musa wanted one shot and one time where he, Allah was warning, you, you can't see, he said, I want to see. And Allah showed what He wanted to show and He was qashya, He was like uh, down to dust. So that in a normal circumstance will kill somebody. So the, the understanding is we're coming with a lot of false, falsehood within ourselves, a lot of calcification upon the soul just for us to understand, a lot of things we've put upon ourselves. Every time we establish the meditation then they're sending a frequency and vibration for us to take us to a new level. So there's going to be sickness, one, to shatter off the badness, there's going to be fevers and heat and all sorts of different effects upon the physicality as the soul is intensifying, the soul is heating up, the soul is receiving new tajallis which are heat and energies onto the soul, heat the body. And the body has all sorts of ways of sort of releasing its burdens through sicknesses, pains, back pains, difficulties, all of these different experiences that people go through. So <coughs> most definitely those whom do their meditation and do it consistently then they're growing faster. And that's why we said each month is a different tajalli. If you do the meditation and you stop, well then what's happening? They can only give that frequency. You're not asking for more voltage, more energy to come. So they have to continuously connect daily, daily, daily connecting and each time feeling more energy each year and each event and each month it has its tajallis and trying to receive those tajallis. And that's why Prophet was describing is a, it's a great jihad, it's an immense fight because some people feel energies they don't do it anymore. Some people feel energies think that they achieved everything and that's it and they don't practice those levels anymore. And we said before for dunya they're continuously asking to go up. And they calibrate their dunya by the different you know guidelines they have in life but for akhirah People are fooled by their nafs that, no, no, they achieve and they start to actually go downward. They're not practicing, they're not doing, they're not supporting, they're not involved and they see their scale is actually going downward. So this is a tajalli and a system in which the tajallis have to be increased, the connections have to be increased and each time then they take the servant to higher levels and higher energies and, and uh, higher frequencies and each higher frequency it shatters a new falsehood. So those are also in the talks of the levels of the nafs, 
and the, the, the soul that returns pleased to Allah and Allah is pleased with that soul. Means then the, all of those inner purifications and inner knowledges and inner practices are building the reality of the soul and purifying the physicality of insan so that they can carry that reality. That's what we said about Sayyidina Mahdi Salam. People think that they're just going to be in that presence but the reason there's so much calamity coming onto earth is because only through the calamity can the earth be purged and cleaned of all the badness. For someone so holy and these souls that are so holy to be returning onto earth, we have to have achieved a level of frequency to accompany them. Because otherwise we're the other part of Qul Jal Haqq, we become the falsehood and their truth is going to annihilate us. So the, the concept of the zikrs and the practices and why Allah is giving so much in the last days, why knowledges are coming out that others are, oh, where are these things coming from, why are they coming? Well it's coming out so much in last days so that Allah can raise the frequency of those whom He wants and has destined to be in those associations, otherwise the two are not matching. How are high frequency souls coming on such a low frequency humanity? So then through calamities and trials and tribulations, through testing and difficulty Allah will be raising their frequencies, so shattering the false and bringing their frequencies up to where they're supposed to be so that they can at least be in the proximity of those holy souls inshaAllah. And the fastest to achieve is through the meditation muraqabah inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as Do the rings, uh, do the rings we have to cross correspond to the seven maqams of the ego? Could you please explain? What are the seven maqams of the ego? The seven levels of the, of the nafs? You have the seven verses of Fatiha, the seven levels of the nafs and uh, the seven rings of the… of our paradises. Somewhat similar but yeah there's a, there's a, there's a, a theme in there and the importance of why Allah named them in sevens. So the… the… Fatiha, we have a talk on that, the seven gates of Surat al-Fatiha, the seven holy verses, these are stations and maqams. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem is the highest. So in dunya you start with Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and we end at Yaqinam al-Yaqinam Sayyidina Surat al-Mustaqim, Surat al-Ladina an'am ta'alayhim ghayr al-Maghdubi alayhim wa al-Dalin. Ghayr al-Maghdubi alayhim wa al-Dalin is actually your entry. That we gave that talk that that's the door for all the zawiyas, not the Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem means you've been dressed with Allah's secret and that every uloom and knowledge is and it's the crown of Prophet Bismillah Allah Rahmanir Raheem is a crown of Prophet That we are trying to achieve. So first the zawiyas are the, the last verse of Surat Al-Fatiha. Those whom angered and those whom went astray, that's why their doors are filled with those categories of people. That born Muslim they didn't practice, they came to tariqah. The ones whom are from… who… communities who went astray and the other communities who, who made partners and, and father and son and angered Allah and that's why the zawiyas are filled with these souls. Because those are the ones whom Allah bring them back in. Arbiya clean them, purify them, teach us, teach the system and now rise until the centermost power is to return back into that reality in the ocean of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem in which Allah addressed with the key and Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, all of Holy Qur'an is in Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and that everything is collapsed into the power of the Ba. And that Ba is then the fountainhead of all knowledges and all realities. 
So the journey is through Surat al-Fatiha and that's why the those who gone astray and, and those who angered Allah is also nafsa amara that their character and is a, of a bad character that is angered Allah and that their their actions are, are not correct and the belief in the hereafter is not established and therefore they do whatever they want whenever they want. But yes alhamdulillah that's why the continuous theme of seven and making your seven tawaf on Kaaba and Allah is making us to continuously think why seven? So the importance of my seven paradises but I have to reach to the top, the seven rings of one atom of my being and I have to traverse. So everything is in a tawaf, everything is in a circumambulation and everything is circumambulating the light. All my being is circumambulating my heart, all my atoms are circumambulating my nucleus. And that's why the earth is circumambulating the sun. So everything is, is related and anywhere we look from the smallest to the external the reality must be the same. Allah calls the humans, come for hajj. They say, no, no we, we, don't, we don't believe in that and so, but your atoms do because all your electrons are making hajj across, around, the, the, uh, around the nucleus. <coughs> All of humanity is making hajj on this earth around the sun. So everyone is making hajj. When Allah calls for people to do, there's no way for anyone to not do it. That's, that's when we say, Allahu Akbar, whatever Allah called in Islam everyone is doing it. They just don't know they're doing it. The bad part of them is the only one that has a choice to disobey Allah but that's when you want to see azimat of Allah and the greatness of Allah is that when He wants humanity to, to make tawaf, everything is making tawaf. Their inner being is making tawaf and if they don't like that the ship that they're on is making tawaf. Alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Uh, Sayyidi, can you please elaborate on the concept of tuning with the shaykh? If we listen to the recordings of our grand shaykhs, does it affect our tuning and loyalty? Thank you for everything, Sayyidi. The, the tuning with the shaykh is important to have that flavor that the frequency of the shaykh who is continuously guiding. It means that when your heart has an affinity and not every, not one can be for all of humanity. Although that one may want to be the only one, it doesn't work that way. So it means that everyone has a flavor and everybody has a frequency. And it's in Allah's hands, that's why hadan Allah that guidance only comes from Allah So no one person can stand up and say, I am the guide for all of humanity because that only comes with Sayyidina Mahdi So imagine then what type of power Allah is going to be releasing on earth that that frequency can handle that reality. As a result of that Allah put 124,000 of these souls on earth to give guidance. Not all of those 124,000 are external guides in which they're calling people towards the guidance of Prophet So means then everybody has an internal frequency, something within their soul that has an appetite for a reality. And when they flip through the stations in life and they seek the saliks and before you know the, the seeker would go through Damascus, Turkey where there were thousands of shaykhs, thousands. And they would sit with them, sit with them, sit with this one, sit with that one, six months would learn this, six months would learn that. But in their heart and their inner frequency it didn't match. 
Mawlana Shaykh, Shaykh Nazim's life was like that. Said, I was searching, studying, I searched, I, stud I studied with this one, studied with all the famous shaykhs of his area. But in his heart was called to Shaykh Dagestani. And he spent one year journeying to go see Shaykh Dagestani. Why? He's uh, achieved with all these shaykhs a reality. But in his inner yearning, his inner frequency, he knew and by Prophet that he was called to that shaykh that had a reality for him. And Sultanul Awliya had a reality, he spent one year travelling to meet Shaykh Dagestani, prayed one night and morning fajr and every trust was open within his heart and then was given accordance by Shaykh Dagestani to go back and now do some dawah. And it was but one night and one year of travelling to reach to that reality. Means that when everybody has, and those were for big shaykhs that were their, their tarbiyah was all their life. From childhood they had uh, spiritual abilities and realities. But to show that you can come across many people and there's not just one person. But there is one person for every person that they should be connected to. There's not one person for all the tariqah, that, that's impossible and that one person shouldn't think like that. But that everybody has one person that they should be connected to and their heart knows what their connection is and what their heart is yearning for. So people whom are not interested in tafakkur and, and, and these realities, well of course they're not attuned to this. They come to this and then mm, it's not for me, it's not in their signal. So those whom are true to themselves, they're seeking that reality, their hearts are attuned to it and as you read their comments that, you know, I've been searching for this type of information, I've been sort of seeking this, all my life I've been looking at all these different things. They had already an inner calling for that reality and it's like a lock and key that it locked and immediately their heart is connected. So when they feel that then they connect and as a result they connect, they meditate. The knowledges that that shaykh is teaching, it vibrates with them. They find their heart knowing it without really even having to study it because they're now attuning, they're vibrating with the shaykh. They're all, they're, it's like it's burned into their reality, it was already in their reality. When he speaks they can pretty much complete the understanding. These are very high level souls that begin to have this type of vibration. So it means that this is something that you nourish that connection, nourish that reality, make that connection. If what the shaykh is teaching is not vibrating with you, well go find somewhere else where your heart is attuned to it. If you really can't understand the teaching, really not interested in the teaching, don't torture yourself, you know. Find through other shaykhs where your heart settles in and when it settles in you feel attuned to it. You feel that, this is what I want, this is what my soul wants, I want these realities. You know, many people have emailed that though they sat with somebody and they weren't speaking anything. They, they were get, not fed any realities and they were yearning for it. So they started to read books of, of non-Muslims and that was a danger. So the shaykh has to be sort of filled with knowledges, suffice to feed his students because he doesn't want them going with plates onto somebody else's table. So what happened? Your parents don't feed you? Say, no, they actually don't give us any food. So what, what kind of parents would that, that the children are going from the neighbor's homes to eat? doesn't speak very well of yourself. So it means the shaykh's reality is his soul, it has to be feeding people. They come, they feel they are well fed, they were fed so much it's going to take like a few days to digest what you've given to us so that we can progress. So the heart already knows, with that then you're connecting because then you're listening to the sobats and meditating. You can begin to now even hear how he talks and the, the words he uses or the broken language that he speaks, whatever it is that you feel that you feel that connection. And that's important and you begin to lock on the frequency of that shaykh. Now every now and then you want to listen to grand shaykh's videos and that's fantastic, they have immense power, look at their face, hear their, their speech, listen to Shaykh Nazim's Sultanul Awliya, Surat al Yaseen at Fajr time, look to his face, close your eyes, listen to Surat al Yaseen to be dressed 
by the power of Surat Yaseen. But it's going to be much more difficult if you say, I'm going to do that all day long as my only connection. Then you can go astray because you don't have enough of that reality to all day long to be making that connection and trying to keep that connection then who, who's teaching you on a daily basis. So the concept is you're watching these videos, taking these teachings, taking these notes, meditating, connecting and attuning your heart, then you're in that school. That shaykh is giving you daily guidance, weekly guidance. But if you disconnect from all of that and say, no I'm only going to Sultanul Awliya's voice, now then you maybe begin to fool yourself because that's a very high level and before you know it you're listening to your own nafs and you're not taking any daily guidance and that, that's where people can become fooled. But you have to have the shaykh that on a daily basis you're connecting with, you're, you're listening, you're learning, you're taking the studies. That's why anything that we've taught you'll find in Mawlana Shaykh Sobhats. All of Mawlana Shaykh's Sobhats talk about being connected, all of Mawlana Shaykh's Sobhats is talked about love. He said, if we don't have love we don't have a way. A path without love is a path that's empty. So anything that's been taught here you'll find it in Mawlana Shaykh's Sobhats. So alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, thank you Sayyidi. You just answered my question that has been plaguing me for so long. Your answer just cleared all my confusions. Thank you so, so much. Allah bless you, thank you, alhamdulillah. Cleared my confusion too. <laughs> um, uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, I struggle with intense grief, pain and loneliness at times. Alhamdulillah it always passes but no amount of practices prevent this feeling from rising. Is this a normal test on the path? You know the path is nothing normal about it. So we are abnormal. Everything, everything is, there is nothing normal on, on this path. Everyone has a different destiny, everybody has different circumstances. Uh, what makes somebody to be sad, what makes somebody to be depressed, it's something they're doing, something somebody's inflicting upon them. It is so many variables that in, in that one line it's not clear for us to <coughs> give a general <coughs> guidance. So there is nothing normal on the path and right now sadness is everywhere. People are, are, are depressed, people are sad. People are not achieving what they wanted to achieve in life. People are, are under all sorts of uh, pressures and what can you do? This is Akhir Zaman in which the world is collapsing and not yet dead yet. So the, the state of dying is not an easy state because at least at that state we would know what condition this earth is and what needs to be done. But in, in a state of going down then everybody is in a collapse mode, a, a depressed mode, a sad mode, a struggling mode, whatever the conditions are. So there's nothing that's normal. Right now we're in a very abnormal time but the only normalcy we have and the only way to relieve sadness is that you have to be in the presence of Prophet So that's the… it's the relief for the believer's heart. That if they learn to make their connection, they connect with the shaykh, asking the shaykh, please say to dress us and I want to be in the presence of Rosa Sharif, in the presence of Prophet And they turn the salawats in their room, they see themselves at Rosa Sharif and that they're down and they're in sujood and that they're, they're not going to raise their head and they want to be at the feet of Prophet and asking Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem that grant me a najat, grant me a salvation, grant me a, an ease, that take away my sadness and, and grant me from your light. And talk to Prophet Rahim. that this is the love and ishq of Prophet for his nation. There's not one person that would uh, come into his presence that he won't grant a, a relief, that he won't make the prayer to Allah to grant that person a relief inshaAllah. And if it's meant to be relief then that's the one whom will grant a relief. If it's meant for a wisdom, a test or a cleansing then the patient, the, 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 the servant must be patient. If they did something wrong in life Allah's cleaning them. So be patient. 
better to be cleaned in dunya than somebody relieve it and the hisab comes back in the qabr. And if, if it's you know if it's a sickness, if it's an opening, whatever it is it just has to be with sabr. And if somebody can take that away then that, that one is Sayyidina Muhammad that if you make du'a to Allah to grant a relief inshaAllah. And it builds the love, we said the broken hearted are the ones whom are called to that reality. And that becomes the reality of testing and sadness in life is that they, they have nowhere to turn. And Allah wounds them to be sad and cry to your messenger, that go to the feet of your Prophet and ask him and build your love and your relationship with him And that builds the bond between the, the Prophet and his nation. And that's what's important inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon. As-salaamu ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.